Hello fellow hikers, uh, I'm T-Rex and today I'm very excited to share with you my new pot. Uh, this is a project I've been working on for a little over eight months now. It's taken me a lot of work to get this point, but I think I'm finally at a point where I'm, I could share with you what I have and it, it's, it's pretty good and I'm excited about it. So let me just open it up. This is the Jewel Thief. Um, that's what I'm calling it. If you're familiar with electric circuits, uh, you may recognize the name. It's the name of a very famous electric circuit, electronic circuit. Um, and I believe the name applies here too, because this pot is very efficient at taking joules uh, away from the uh, joules released by the combustion of your stove. Now, as you can see, it's a heat exchanger pot. It has a heat exchanger at the bottom. Uh, some of the specs is that it weighs 2.9 ounces, uh, which is very light for a backpacking pot but it's unheard of for a heat exchanger pot. Now, its volume is 550 milliliters, which is, in my opinion, the perfect volume. Uh, it's a little over two cups of water. You can still boil two cups of water, and if you're just do doing water boils for meal rehydration, um, it's the perfect size. Uh, now, its efficiency is where I think it really shines. Uh, it is a very efficient stove. I mean, not stove, a very efficient pot system. And now I would like to potentially in a different video discuss efficiency in a little more detail in terms of joules, calculating joules released by a stove's con combustion over a duration of a burn and the amount of joules absor absorbed and put into the water of your pot. Uh, and that percentage being what efficiency actually is because there's a lot of different variables and just measuring how many grams of fuel that was burned to boil two cups of water uh, is a good test but it's not the most accurate. However, for the sake of simplicity, that's what I'm gonna do in this video. And this pot boils two cups of water at room temperature using 3.9 grams of fuel, which is very efficient. It's actually more efficient than other heat exchanger pots like this one, which uses 4.2 to 4.3 grams of fuel at room temperature for two cups of water. Now, why make this pot? Why go through all the trouble to uh, make this thing? And I. I think the answer really lies in the fact that most ultralight hikers go with something like this, which is a Tokes 550 milliliter, very lightweight titanium pot. Um, but at some point, most of them also experimented with something like this, a heat exchanger system uh, using, and, and in this case, these are both jet boil systems, but there are other systems out there like the MSR reactor um, and uh, Sterno Inferno, uh, Primus made one as well. So th there's other systems, but why is this not as popular amongst the ultralight community? And that's because they don't work or they don't make much sense outside of trip durations that are over, that are under like a week or so, depending how many boils you're doing a day. There's a very small window, especially with this one, which weighs a little more at 10.2 ounces versus this one is 7.1 7 ounces. There's a small window of uh, trip duration that this makes sense. This also doesn't make much sense on a through hike sometimes because the, um, the resupply window may be half the time less than a week and sometimes more than a week. So there's a lot of times where you will be uh, carrying a stove system that just has excess weight that you don't need. So that got me thinking, is it possible to make a pot that has this weight with a pot that has this efficiency. And I didn't quite achieve that, but I got pretty darn close. This weighs 2.6 ounces with lid. This weighs 2.9 ounces with a lid. Um, this using a BRS 3000T running about halfway, not full blast, could boil two cups of water with nine grams of fuel. This boils two cups of water at full blast using 3.9 grams of fuel. So um, almost half of the uh, almost almost twice the efficiency if you will uh, it's a very efficient system and i think for the first time uh, i've managed to create a pot that no matter the scenario or circumstance it actually makes sense to just take this one because uh, especially if you're filling your own uh, fuel cans using a adapter off the market uh, then all scenarios, this is the lighter option because of how efficient it is and the fact that it is just so close in weight to something like this. Now, I'm gonna show off some of its features. Um, I have this lid, of course, and inside you can nest a small stove. This is a BRS 3000T, very popular ultralight backpacking stove. 
I have a Bic mini lighter, and I have a 110 gram fill canister nested inside. It's taken me a lot to get this point. Uh, I've made three working prototypes before this. And let me see if I can actually drag them back into focus for you. But yeah, I've made three working prototypes. This is the fourth iteration. Um, and before these three working prototypes, I've managed to make way too many heat exchangers. Uh, I spent a lot of time dabbling in heat exchangers, and I'm not formally trained in mechanical engineering, so the biggest barrier to entry to take it on this project is arming myself with the appropriate knowledge uh, to be to even like make intuitive design choices that make sense. Uh, and it's been very hard, but I think um, it's really shown with 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 what I've accomplished. Let me just take these out. Now, in a different video, uh, perhaps if you'd like, I could go over what I did uh, design-wise to achieve this weight. Um, but I'm just going to address the elephant in the room is that you see carbon fiber. And for those of you that know, there are health concerns related with carbon fiber and direct food contact. And that's because carbon fiber is usually impregnated with an epoxy resin. Um, and that's the case with this as well. This carbon fiber drum is impregnated with epoxy resin. And then the epoxy resin is also used to bond it to the uh, aluminum, uh, aluminum heat exchanger. Now, to get away, um, get, not get away, but get around the uh, health concerns of that, I have centrifugally coated the inner diameter of the pot with a uh, thin silicone coating uh, that acts as a food grade, FDA compliant barrier for direct food contact. Uh, between this and the epoxy joints and the uh, carbon fiber itself and it, it works so good uh, so It works good so far is what I'm trying to say um, However, what I would like to see uh, in the long run is how that uh, holds up you know, With abrasion because obviously you put a can like this with a metal rim around it inside here And it's gonna be bouncing up inside your pack all day and I'm wondering how long can it last and how long can it keep doing that before it rubs the silicone coating off the uh, off the sidewalls and your water is making direct contact with the uh, carbon fiber. Now some future design iteration changes that I'm likely to change are the handles. The handles are currently straight, they are not contoured. I would like to learn how to try to contour them. Um, I haven't figured out how to do it yet, but uh, uh, I hope to fix that because uh, right now they have a single contact point along the outer diameter and that contact point may eventually lead to uh, a premature uh, abrasion that starts to eat through the carbon fiber. Uh, another design iteration change I'm going to make on the next one is the lid design. This, uh, this little tab right here that I have for taking the lid on and off, um, I'm going to move it to the top because currently in its position on the side it could chew through the uh, stuff sack you have it stored in and uh, damage your stuff sack. Um, I also wish to find a way to add graduation marks on the in inside so uh, you could figure out the volume of water you're putting inside the pot. Um, but yeah, that's where the project is at. Uh, that's currently uh, currently the state of it. Uh, and I think what I would like to do now is just show you some videos of testing between showing you how many grams of fuel a system like this uses versus how many grams of fuel a pot like this uses versus how many grams of fuel a pot like this uses. Um, and also put everything on a scale for weight transparency as well. Uh, and across this test I'm going to be using the Jetboil Stash burner that comes with this system uh, just so that there's a burner consistency across all three. Um, and I hope you like it. I'm excited to hear what you have to say about your thoughts on this, really, and please put that in the comments. I, I'd like to know if you think this is a wasted endeavor or if you think this is something continue, uh, you know, worth continuing to pursue. Uh, but anyways, thank you for your time, and I hope you enjoy the video.